My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arachia Gallagher, and head of the budding team behind Divide and Conquer. And welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as Isengard has been unleashed. We are going to have a nice little battle in Dunharrow today to see what Dunharrow looks like, uh, to show you all that it's still in the mod. And we are going to take Ginyard, I imagine. This fellow here, Captain Herubrand, is not likely to trouble us. I'm not all that concerned. I think, I was thinking about it on the way to work actually today. I think once Rohan has fallen, what we will do is build a lovely bespoke-like army and take Minas Tirith in one fell swoop before Mordor get it. Um, because I'd like to fight at Minas Tirith, and if we turn off the battle timer, we can actually fight right to the top of Minas Tirith. It'll probably take an entire episode, I should expect, but it'll be good fun. And then, um, what is our actual goal? We do want to get the ring, of course, so whenever the ring pops up as well, we've got to focus on that. Oh, here we are, sorry. 50 regions, Isengard, Edoras, Karas, Galadon. Ah, oh, we've got to take the elves out. And we need to just kill Lorien and Rohan. So we will have to divert north at some point. I'm not sure we will get 50 regions, because by the when you're getting near to needing 50 regions, you've absolutely won the game already. So we probably won't bother with that. Have I moved Grima where I want him to go? Have you got a mission at the moment, haven't you? Oh no, take settlement. We've already spoken with the dwarves, didn't we? Yes, and they didn't like what I gave them. Uh, or rather, sorry, I charged too much for my math information and they weren't having any of it. Floy! <laughs> What'd you say, Floy? Yeah. Seems we'll have hey, farewell. Right, up to Gundabad with you. Without question, my lord. Without question. Tomorrow's my lord. journey awaits. And now we end the turn. Um, things haven't really progressed since the last episode with the mod, except I've written more of Lagaran's story, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. Um, the the Nazgul stories are just going to be longer than anything else in the mod, really, because um, just once you start writing it. You get ideas then and you think, oh, I'm gonna, we've got to bring that in. How am I going to actually get to the point where he becomes a Nazgul? Oh, I need time to do that. And it just becomes an enjoyable little thing. But, I mean, I've, I've, I, as possibly I may have mentioned or may not have mentioned, I'm not going to write stories for either the Witch King or Kamul. So I won't be making up backstories for them. So there, at least there are only seven to do. And I'm, I've done one. I'm closing in on the second of another. So... Um, only five to go. <laughs> right, anyway, let us turn our attention to Dunharrow, where Prince Swidhelm will end out his days much like the, um, oh, the member of his family from some considerable time before, who, of course, Aragorn and the company come upon the, the dead and dying remains, or dead dying, the dead remains of the age-old Rohan uh, prince he was, I believe who departed Dunharrow and was never seen again. But welcome to the battle map for Dunharrow. Here we are, muster ground of Rohan and the gate of the dead. This is the large step that we've got to climb all the way up. And then at the top it is just a flat plain. Um, but it is rather defensible because you can move, defenders can move their forces down and fight all the way up these um, these narrow passages. But of course, you can only really get one unit at a time up there, so it's um, it's a little bit of a challenge. But the, our enemy is not an archer unit, and so we have nothing to fear in terms of archer-based threats. But uh, he will charge us as soon as we arrive at the top, of course, because he's only got cavalry. It isn't actually that much of a defensive battle map, now I look at it, to be honest, because of the problems inherent in medieval 2 that these kind of paths are a nightmare a nightmare I just merge two words together are a nightmare to defend if one could possibly get say a pike unit to go lower down and an archer unit up the back you could rinse and repeat sort of cycle your archer units around the back while the pike unit holds them in place and then swap out your archers so you're getting a clear shot over the top of your pikes into the units coming up but if you've got any archers up here they're gonna do almost no kills the other advantage, I suppose, is if you build your, if you put up a defense in a sort of semicircle around the top and have your archers behind, then as the units come into this area, you can shower arrows down upon them. But still, I don't think it's an overwhelmingly easy place to defend. Ah, welcome to our apparently French command. <laughs> the fleur de lis is emblazoned upon the, the tents of the Rohan, uh, of the Rohan, of the Rohirrim. 
And this is the paths of the dead leading all the way to the gate of the dead, which is not represented. And um, instead you get this weird feature where the edges of the map don't often align fully with the terrain of the custom tile itself. So do apologize for the jumping and bumping. I know there's a little forest at the back here. <laughs> Anywho, um, let's actually speed it up to time six. I purposefully didn't get anyone to sprint because they'll knacker themselves climbing these steps. So they shall walk to the top. Um, something I was going to put out there because I did think of Night of um, Night of the North. Uh, uh, if you're about uh, someone whose stories I thoroughly enjoyed reading, but if anyone has a really burning desire to write a guided story, I should say that from the outset because a lot of people do get annoyed. Um, I do have a vision for these Nazgul, um, and that will of course then be Dak's vision for them, un unless any of the uh, modders. If any of the modders want to chime in on the stories, I would gladly take any input. But uh, I've given a sort of a layout to what I'm going to do with the Nazgul stories. I've, I've set them up as I think they will play out. Um, but if anyone particularly would love to write one of these stories based on the guidelines that I can give you for what I envisage would be the story of X, Y or Z, then please do get in contact on Discord if you would. Um, don't post it in the comments here on YouTube because there's no real way for me to contact you. But if you really want to write one of the Nazgul stories um, based on the guidelines that I can give you or I would give you, then please do message me on Discord and say, hey, I'd happily write one. Because writing five of them is terribly daunting and I'm not overly concerned about having written every single one. That's not my ultimate desire here. Right, don't uh, all fire at once. Also, Lurts, you're going to take a right pounding. So if you turn a bit diagonally, so that you, you're you protected. And then all of you, as one, bring down that bodyguard unit. The archers are the first. I should imagine they'll get almost no kills in the first volley, to be honest. But then when Saruman bolts whisper in, then it changes the story. And the bodyguards charge out. Don't let them get to our back line. Cut them off, Lurtz. It's Saruman they want. Oh, it's horribly laggy, isn't it? What is going on? We've absolutely decimated them. Turn and face! Turn and face! Charge into them! People always say don't charge into them, but we're just trying to stop them from getting a charge. Yes, it worked! <laughs> Morons! Come out of defensive mode, Lurts. Finish with home. Remember that in your versions of Divide and Conquer, this unit, like this, the Berserker, will, the will no longer be an effective against cavalry unit. I mean, they'll still be good against cavalry because they do a ridiculously high amount of damage. But uh, they no longer actually have an inbuilt bonus against cavalry. Oh no, wrong button. There we go. Oh, it's okay. It's all over. We lost 11. And Guard of the Hand took the most at 14. Oh, but the Uruk... Oh, oh sorry. No, 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 no. As expected, the Uruk just didn't kill a single one of the enemy. <laughs> oh, dear. That's a very um, stereotypical wizard depiction of Gandalf, really, isn't it? And I'm fairly certain it, it does say Gandalf has a grey hat. I'm always very astounded by images like this. I mean, absolutely take poetic license with anything that Tolkien doesn't mention. But if he specifically mentions a thing, why deviate from it? If Gandalf had a blue hat, he would be one of the blue wizards. It's one of the key identifying features of each of the wizards is that they wear the colour that they are assigned. So if he was bunged around with a blue hat, it would rather defeat the... Uh, um, it would rather fly in the face of the actual blue wizards. That's nothing to take away from the the uh, the picture itself. It's a fantastic piece of art, but I just don't understand little pieces like that. Why go through all the detail and all the trouble of getting the right details in? Like you may have noticed that Boromir had his horn there, for example. So um, kind of like smaller little details, and then give Gandalf a completely incorrect hat. It just seems bizarre. I'm not like having a, a nerd rage foam at the mouth because Gandalf has a blue hat, but I just it just puzzles me that people would go through such dedication. Only to then not depict as it should be. It just seems bizarre. Anyway, King Eamond is all that stands before us, the father of Eomer. 
And um, we've killed all of the others. And I think the army over there's probably got this. Oh no, that's a lot of trash in that army, isn't there? There's a lot of trash in that army. So you fellows, um, we might as well send you as one, send you out as a single army. Um, if you head out here and build me a tower, first of all. How much money are we making? Yeah, about five, six hundred. You build me a tower over there for now, and then we'll head into East Emnet, I think. We're trying to avoid the East Fold, that's what we want to be their last province. But again, we'll end the turn. We're about to be attacked, I think. King Aemond will not take the assault on Ginyard lying down, and he will come for us. And we'll be ready. We'll be damned ready. It'll mean, of course, a victory for evil over all if we are to take out Rohan and Gondor, because then all the enemies in the south will, of course, overrun Dol Amroth without any trouble. Which is why we, we need the ring, really. I mean, I don't really want to fight Mordor, but that's inevitable. Um, but we need the ring to jazz things up so that we get... Uh, like, I'd love to take on the Ardenaeum as Isengard. That'd be good fun. And we've just found the ring, and it's bloody miles away. I don't even think I can get there in the eight turns that would be needed. So that's going to have to be a hard pass. I'm really not concerned about anything they send to Edoras. I absolutely think Edoras will hold, regardless of what they have. So we will try and shut down their other locations. But it's amazing how many troops they can train in such a short amount of time with such crappy villages. I mean, this region up here is a village. This region, granted, is a town, but that's still not a great producer of forces. Uh, Entwide in East Emnet here will uh, obviously fall, so any troops that they were sending on us will now be done and dusted. So there's only really West Emnet, which I think is a castle. Uh, do we have a spy, actually? No, we don't. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I would if I could. Continue I on your way, please, sir. Place, my lord. Yes. And we're gonna have to end the turn again. Come on, Rohan, don't let Ginyard just fall. You've got two huge armies there, and you've just bolstered Aemon's army. Send him against us. Although it actually looks like they've just taken Aemon out of the army, because I can't see the stars anymore. We'll find out in time, won't we? We will know when we know. Ah, Dunland, what say you? Have you come for an alliance or peace? Or are you trying to bribe me? We bring work. Oh, you want an alliance. But your enemy is my ally. So... Ah, but then if I go to... If I ally with them, that'll declare a truce between the two, won't it? Go on. We cannot thank you enough. Until we meet again. I think that forces a truce, which, only, which is a silly idea, really, actually, that I've just done there, because it will just mean we'll have to choose between them again in about five turns, when uh, Ened White again turns to the warpath. I had thought about attacking Gondor from the west, which, of course, is the natural progression for Isengard to go west. Um, let Saruman take you there, because... Oh, look, they, it's happened on the immediate turn. <laughs> Oh, no, I want to stay allied to Ened White. So in the same turn that we are allied with them, we are then, once again, not allied with them. But coming from the west on Gondor is like a cheap blow, really. It's like an unseen uppercut. They just cannot stop us if we come from the west, and it'll, they'll crumble in the east long before we get to Minas Tirith. So I'd rather wait. Ginyard has four turns, dear, oh dear. He's in there. Alduini. Oh, there's King Aemon. Let us settle matters on the field of battle. Captain Herobrand is gathering Coward. steam, and Irminrich is joining him by the looks of it. But they've buggered off and left Entwaite it alone, haven't they? Oh no, they've got another general. You. Christ. Rowan just has troops coming out of their ears. Where are they getting all these people from? Yes, my lord. Who are we after? Gundabad. Yulstone, go up there. Awaits. I'm tempted to attack Ginyard, but then I'd rather m these troops meet us on the field, to be honest. Although, yes, would I? Their cav- No, gone. we're going to attack it. Sorry. And we'll call Aemond into battle, where he'll send most of his cavalry into the city, and we can easily deal with them. Because cavalry is garbage in city fights, and is an a hindrance more than anything. So if we can get the gate down early and start spreading out through the streets of the town, we can really choke point their cavalry and totally negate their effect. Stay 
The alternative, of course, is to go and camp outside the gate from the side that Aemond is coming, uh, which is over here somewhere. Uh, he's going to be aiming for this gate, I would have thought. But this is a nice wide battlefield in town, inside the Orkish town. So, which plays into our advantage, because then we can surround the cavalry even more so than before. Uh, for now, just all come and line up. We're not worried about the towers in this type of battlefield, so... One of you take down the gate. One of you take down the wall. Archer units grouped together. Come out of that. Come and stand here. We're not going to win this one on archers. It will all be on our melee forces. We have got a, low, a lot of low tier melee today though. So we'll have to uh, be at least a little careful. There are probably some good Rohan units here on the field. Nothing to be too worried about, but there'll be at least something. But please do shoot at whatever you can. Oh, don't tell me you're going to try and open the gate and do that annoying thing. Yep, there you go. They've already done it, so now I'll... Change of plans. Change of plans. Run! <laughs> Get the spearmen to the front! Oh dear. Their cavalry has not opted to go into the town, and we shall have to slay them out here on the field. But if that's what they want, then we'll bloody well overwhelm them. Good, you cut them off. Well done. Well done. I'd like to stay in the front. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Oh, Rohan bodyguards have come in. Oh, well, they've gone up against some beavers. Should be alright. Oh, was that? Was that a bang? Oh, wow, they're cutting right through to the gate. The AI is just so difficult to judge, isn't it? Nine times out of ten, they will they will break for the town square as fast as their little legs will kick and carry them. And they will not let anything stand in their way. And then the other one time, they do this. And you're just left thinking, come on, AI. You're going to be predictable. Be predictable every damn time. I mean, it won't save them. The initial shock factor they've got on some of our forces is admittedly useful to them. But they've got cavalry and they're not charging in with it, which is definitely to their cavalry's end. Oh, why are our archers so crap? Do as you're damn well told. How many times do we have to ask that? If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. There we are, they're all pinned in. You're not even under attack, but I don't understand why you're all, all over the place. Go on, shoot the stuff. Right, who, where are the spears? Get the spears forward, get the spears forward. And the damn pikes, they don't even seem to be involved. Oh, our swordman, our swordman. Get him out. Get him out. He's like a rank nine. Ugluck's in there up against whoever's coming. So the battle is going to take place outside the walls. So bloody be it. And the, the, the army that holds the town centre is not a threat, really. Right, Raiders, you pull out as well. Pull yourselves into that gap there. Ah, oh, we've got a unit curling on the side. Ah, oh, perfect. Oh, it's only scouts. Ignore the threat. There is no threat. Ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. Make a wider front, closer to the actual front. Charge in, in we go. You assist and hit those scouts. Remember that Orc uh, Raiders, whilst Uruk I archers aren't particularly great as actual archers. Ah, King Aemond is down. 
Um, Urukai Raiders are actually quite a good unit and way better than anything Rohan has here today. So that'll be why you will see much of their army disintegrate into nothing. And also do of course remember that because we just killed their king, the king of their entire faction, their army is now going to capitulate, which I think I've already said today, um, but it's just such a fitting word. They will just propose, propose? They will now pose a no threat whatsoever. And it now becomes a task of breaking into the city and killing everything that we can once inside of it. But if you guys can shoot at anything, then please do. No, you don't need to do that, actually. We're in. Just go through. Just get everyone through the gate. Rohan bodyguards come out to meet us. Ignore them. Oh, where is he? Did you make it out? Yes, he made it out. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Glorious. Oh, dear. They're all over the place once they're actually in there, aren't they? Yeah, you pull over to there. Oh, we could really do that gate. There's a hole in the wall there. Some yawling militia. So the town, the guard of the city centre, of course, are uh, untested as yet. Oh, they've got fireman bike. It's all over for you, Rohan. Stare up at your waving flags and remember them well. For they shall be the last thing you see. Someone kill him. Oh, we're out of everything except crossbows. Let's get them in. No, crossbows. Oh, the enemy general fell. Give me that hole in the wall that I need. Come on. Not that we actually do really need it, to be honest. Oh, wow, that's an earth-shattering blow, isn't it? Our men have taken control of We've lost control yeah, and there of we the are. All of our units ran through. It was like, uh, that was perfect. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. It's over, Rohan. King Aemond is gone. Whoever was in here is gone. There are still units fighting somewhere. Yawling militia. Hunt them down, every last man. You fellows, don't be shooting at us. Is that it? Yes. We did lose 786, but Rohan paid for their arrogance. 127 half orc spear guard, well done. Ah, there's Tyrion. Tyrion upon Tuna. Great elven city. One of the few elven cities that is not destroyed or ransacked or raided or sunk beneath the ocean for most of them, in fact. In fact, in Middle-earth, by the time of the War of the Ring, the only true elven cities really left, like proper cities, arguably, is Mithlond and Caras Galathon. You could also possibly say Thranduil's Halls, I suppose, yes. but it's more of a cave network Have than a proper me. city, you know? Kill them all. <laughs> But then having said that, Karas Galathon is a load of connected tree houses. We destroyed the enemy! Oh <laughs> have we wiped them out? Yes! <laughs> yes! There are no more. Rohan's family line could not hold any longer. It is done I then. Will only address you in battle. It is over. Where was Gondor when the Westfold fell? Where was Gondor when the King's Land fell? Where was Gondor when it all fell? Nowhere. Gondor doesn't give a damn about you, Rohan. Right, now what we need to do is mop up um, all of their towns and quickly set up an economic base. But let us be wary, because there is a risk some of these rebels will attack us. That is not beyond the realms of possibility. Yeah, but we're making loads of money now, blimey. But we're not going to be keeping you in there. You're out straight away, please. So, we'll leave behind 14 of you, 8 of you, because we'll eventually get you back and retrained when we hit the barracks event. 20 of you. 
And the rest of us plow on to Honordrift, which is not a castle that I thought it was. Oh, and it's been converted to random bandits. Oh, it really is over. Oh, so is Entwide. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Shall we see how, how overwhelmingly outnumbered our enemy is and see how well the auto-resolve does? Now, don't mistake me, though. Woodland Hunters are a fantastic archer unit, but they're a useless melee unit. 67. <laughs> I'll take that. Can you imagine, though, if uh, Saruman died in that attack? That'd be insane. Right, we now hold all the way up to the very Arganath itself. Um, but we have got the two provinces of the Wold that need to go down. But I could do with some towers again, so Saruman, if you would, get me sight along that southern Gondorian border. Let's take me up to the Wold so that we can see Eastern and the Wold. Ah, Entwine doesn't like us. Low tax rate, methinks. Oh, a Grog Hut. Public health bonuses. Repair... What are we retraining exactly there? Pole Tennis Guild doesn't do anything. Get rid of that. Is it a blacksmith? Is it because they've got the blacksmith? Yes, it is. They're all getting armor upgrades. Yeah, go on then. I'll take that. And we'll chuck in a Shrine of Melkor. And similarly, Edoras. We could do with Shrines of Melkor all over the place, actually. Do you have anything we can't use? I didn't think of that. No, you seem to be all right. You can have one as well. Ah, you really won't like us actually at all, will you? Because you... Um, you're a castle. It's very difficult to maintain public order in castles. Ah, oh, we've reached Amunhen. You've reached Amunhen. Also referred to as the Hill of the Eye, it is one of the three peaks at the southern end of the Long Lake Nenhithoil. Above the falls of Rauros, on this hill the seat of seeing is constructed which is told to give the ones sitting in it farsight. On the opposite side from the river Anduin lies Amun Law. Here the seat of hearing was constructed. These remnants of former glory date back to the early days of Gondor when the northern borders were still guarded from all evil. Indeed, that was once the northern border of Gondor proper, not counting the sort of... Um, vassals and lands that had sworn fealty to Gondor, Gondor's most northerly border in a de facto border was the Argonath, and at that time is when it was built. Similarly, their border on the west is not actually Tharbad, and the lands of Enedwyth and, Min and then up to Minhiriath, although Minhiriath, of course, is Arnor, but the lands of Enedwyth were never truly part of Gondor proper. They were ruled by Gondor in as much as Siberia is ruled by Russia. Like, hardly anyone lives there. No one's ever going to fight over it. It's a place of nothing. But it is held by them because the people that actually live there are never going to say no. They, they still go about their lives. They are unaffected by the Gondorians. So their, their um, de jure northern border was Tharbad. But their de facto northern, northern border really was the White Mountains. Or in many, in, in, in truth really, the river that runs uh, through here. Uh, for this is the old Pukil land where the Druwaithi Oi resided. And we don't really know how far west and indeed up to the borders of the White Mountains the Gondorians really went. Um, but uh, anyway, that's all massively tangential. Um, I think I'm going to end the episode there. So we'll take on Adrith and then we'll prepare. We're almost at the barracks events. We've got a few turns. We'll prepare this sort of master army, if you will, to take Minas Tirith, which we'll try and do before the ring moves. And then wherever the ring moves, because that's just way too far away for us to be bothering about now, but wherever the ring moves after that, we will try and get it. Because getting the ring, of course, is the purpose. Um, so we'll just try and assemble two armies once we've mopped up Rohan's old lands and started earning money. One army to take Minas Tirith in a fantastic battle. Hopefully it'll have a big garrison and it'll be a good laugh. Uh, and the other army to go and find the ring so that we can make preparations to overrun the Golden Wood. Which has stood for too long against all. But one will topple the great Malorn trees of Karas Galathon and it will be Saruman of many colours. Um, but he's got to get the ring first. But for now, that is all we all. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. As I say, if you are keen on writing a Nazgul story based on some prompting and guiding from myself, I'm talking like a couple of sentences, nothing severe, then please do get in contact with me on Discord. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter too much if English is not your first language, because I can go through it and correct any sort of grammar and punctuation and whatnot. So don't let that hold you back. So until we speak again, Navarne den Pedamad Melunin, and farewell.